<laughs> you know what? I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, we're, I don't know what day it is. And you ever feel that way? I think our Wednesdays have turned into Thursdays and Thursdays have talked, turned into Saturdays. And it's different in times that we're in right now, very di different and difficult times we're in right now. So I had a couple of thoughts. And um, one was that we're closer now to people than we've ever been, important people to us in our lives. And you may say, I love you more than you've ever said before to anyone. But the thought came to mind that if you love someone and you don't tell them you love them, but you continue being with them and going with them, at some point in time, they're wondering, wow, I wonder if he or she still loves me. So saying it's kind of important, don't you think? So here's what I'm suggesting. I'm not suggesting that you tell all your sphere of influence that you love them, although we do in different ways. But I would say we have to amp up our communication. And now, right now, there is no excuse not to do that. We have the time to do that. So we're gonna to talk today. We're gonna to spend about 30 minutes. Pat Zabie's gonna join us and so is uh, Mark is gonna join us. Porter out of uh, Dallas, Texas. I'm here in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm Mike Salvaggio. We're gonna share a few thoughts with you in the next 30 minutes because we love you. I mean, you're part of what we do and we hope we're part of what you do too. I love you, Michael. I love you, Michael. I love you, Mark. <laughs> I love you, Pat. These guys are so much fun to work with. I will tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. So um, how do we do that? I would say by staying in touch with communication, uh, there's some great ways to do that. So let me just share a little something with you. It's not difficult. I mean, so many times we think we need this complex software and I mean, there's some real easy solutions to that. We're going to share some with you uh, a little bit later, but uh, let me do this first, let me share this with you. And here's one of the things we want to think about doing. Let's just go back to our basics. Uh, it does not have to be complex. Those notes that we always talk about, what a great time to just send out, send out a note a day. We don't have to go crazy and do five notes a day. Just try sending out one note every day. Had a little time, it came to mind. I just thought I'd drop you a little note. And phone calls, there's nothing like that personal phone call. So pick up the phone, make the call. And again, it's just like you came into my mind and I thought I'd give you a call and see how you're doing. If you got a little impromptu video, send that. We've got a crazy problem with squirrels in our backyard and we've had to catch them. We've actually got a little trap and we're catching them. Made a little video showing us catching and releasing the squirrels. People enjoy that. Make them part of your world. Post those kind of things to Facebook and you'll create events and moments that, for your CRM that they'll never forget. They cannot phone, they cannot contact your, they cannot eliminate your phone call with the stroke on a keyboard. So why don't you do something that they can really hang on to and have the ability to use in the future and think about. If you're asking somebody why, here's a great tip. Ask them why at least three times. If they're talking about something that's making them happy that day or something they're concerned about, ask them why that's happening. First time they say, they answer the question why is what they think they think. The second is what they think you want to hear. The third is what they really feel. You've heard before, drill down three levels. Well, here's the three levels. And this came from Blue Fishing. What a great book. What a great speaker we had at Celebration that year to be able to hear them. Communication counts. Don't underestimate the power of simplicity. Don't be easy to understand. Be impossible to be misunderstood. I heard someone one time ask for directions to go to someplace, and the person rattled off the directions. And the comment came back, I thought it was brilliant. And he said, okay, I want you to tell me the directions again, but this time, explain it to me like I'm 12 years old. In other words, the responsibility is the author's. So make it clear, make it simple, start with your CRM, and what a great time to do an annual update on the value of your real estate. And just say, you know, in these times, we're able to do things for our customers and clients that we've never had the opportunity to do because a lot of it's time intensive. So I wanted to let you know, that's what I'm spending a lot of my time doing. If it's okay with you, I'm gonna generate an evaluation of the market, maybe some comments on your particular neighborhood. Later in this little 30 minute segment, Pat Zabie's gonna tell you a little bit more about how to do that effortlessly. And you can do it almost effortlessly. We have the technology now to do it. So I would think about that. And maybe in the spirit of technology, 
Um, you might think about using multiple signatures and if you're using Gmail. Formerly they were called canned responses, now they're called templates. You can learn a whole lot more about this and some other great technology tips and technology and plans for success. Mark Porter's teaching that course next Tuesday and Wednesday, the 5th and the 6th. So get on CRS.com and maybe he can tell you a little bit about it when he speaks to you in the next couple of minutes. But here's just one little slice of that. Think about multiple signatures, save so much time. And my signatures sometimes are an entire paragraph. So if it's a frequently asked question, you turn it into a signature, can response template, whatever your program calls it, and send that out. I do that for referral leads. I have uh, referral response one, referral response two, three. I don't want to refer, I don't want to communicate with you any more response. They're my names for it, which means we're going to say goodbye, but I can pull that up. It might be a whole paragraph. It might have hyperlinks, but I only have to write it well and write it one time and have that ready to go out. Really easy to do, thanks to some of the technology that's out there today. Now it's called templates, by the way. It used to be called um, can responses in Gmail. One and, uh, other thing, I'm going to, yeah. Outlook, it's called Scan. auto text. Outlook First, is called let's what? talk about how to schedule an email to send later. Auto text. This is what Gmail looks like auto without text. Boomerang okay. installed. So uh, we won't play the program for you, but it's auto text in Outlook. So uh, the site I'd like you to go to, when you get time, go to Boomerang for Gmail, if you're using Gmail. And that's going to give you the ability to send out an email and mark it to deliver later, to come back to your inbox in case someone does not respond and does not respond in so many days, or to come back in so many days whether they respond or not. Sometimes I'll send out an uh, inquiry, have you had any thoughts about the homes that we've looked at? And I'll put that Boomerang on it for maybe one day out, whether they respond or not. So that reminds me that I had sent it originally and I didn't get a response yet, or I did. And it just pops right back into my inbox. So there's just a couple little things that I think you might like to have, uh, maybe keep you busy over these days and get your uh, database in better shape. And by all means, use the big C. It's all about communication. That's how they know they still love you and you're thinking about them. Okay, so hey, Mark, you ready to do a little something now? Uh, yeah, let me uh, turn my screen share on and, and bring it up. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Uh, nice lead into the class coming up next week. And, I, and you know, it's not just going to be Mark. Uh, I've invited Pat and, and Michael to, to join in and grab a chapter in, in, in the one, one day class stretched out over two days, uh, it's uh, two mornings in a row. And so what I want to show you here today is uh, kind of the second part of what we talked about in the last tip video that we brought up. The last tip video, we, uh, we showed you how to take this YouTube video and, and instead of guiding people over to uh, YouTubes where they get caught up in other videos from other competitors and just, you know, get drift off. How do I get this video here over to my web page is what we talked about. And uh, you can go back and reference that in We Are CRS, or uh, many of us have links on our, our channels for that video. Uh, and I would encourage you to go back and see it. But so I want to pick it up here. You've got the email on your web page now. I'm sorry, not the email, the video on your web page now. And now I want you to uh, put it inside of an email. But first I wanna give you a couple examples of how I've used this. One here is, uh, here's an email communication, just one of our monthly, in a sense it's like a newsletter, but it's a video. And so we cut a video, talk about uh, the subject matter for two minutes and uh, shoot that video out as well as post it on our YouTube channel. And here's one, uh, just a common, questions answered in uh, in video format here's another example of placing email or placing video in your email and it's our just listed email message so every time we get a new listing we create a video put it in youtube put it on our web page and we share that via an email message now there's really no such thing as video inside an email message it's, it's all about perception, whether you use in Boom Boom or, or some of the other uh, uh, companies out there that charge to put video in your email. I want to show you how to do this yourself so you get credit with 
Google. You get the juice with Google. Otherwise, why would you want Bonbon to get the, the juice from Google? So I'm creating traffic on my YouTube channel and my webpage that Google likes, and it helps me climb up the search engine result. Uh, here's another example of using video. Um, oh, actually, this is one, this is a, a trick. My MLS does not allow me to put a YouTube video in MLS because it could be considered branding. So what do I do on that 25th page or that last page or last photo that I upload to MLS for this listing, I, I put this photo. Now, what does this photo tell the surfer who runs across this photo? Yeah, it's, it shows them that there's a video over, over in YouTube. So all they have to do is maybe go over to YouTube or Google and search the address. This video will show up. Another example of using video in your email is when you show one of my properties. So I get an email message every time a property you set up a showing, um, and I reply back to to that email saying, hey, um, here's thanks for showing my property or listing. Um, here's a video to tie you over. And this, this ends up getting three to six hits immediately uh, when I shoot that to you. So consider these three or four approaches to, to getting video into your email. And uh, let me show you how to do it. So first of all, I'm going to head on over to my web page. And Here's my website, castlehillsrealestate.com. Here's happens to be where the location of that video is today. And I'm going to, I'm just going to grab a snapshot to put in my email message. So how am I going to do that? First of all, you notice when I rest the cursor off to the right, the play button is black. But when I place the cursor over it, the play button turns red. Grab a screenshot while it's red. And the keystroke for this for you PC users is Alt Print Screen. So you look for the Alt button, look for the Print Screen button, hold down Alt, tap Print Screen. And uh, for uh, Mac users, what's the Print Screen button? Do you remember, Michael? I use con uh, Command Control Shift 4, and then I select the portion of the screen that I want, and it's on my clipboard. Oh, so you could crop it out right there. Right there. Copy it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my traditional way. I'm gonna do an Alt Print Screen. Now I'm going to go over to my favorite photo editing program, whatever that might be. Uh, most of them can crop. Let me bring that up in front of us. And I'll paste. And here, now I got the video. So I'll just go up and grab the corner, crop that out a bit. And that's good. So I'm going to highlight all that with a control A and uh, copy it with a control C. And I'm going to head back to my email program, open up a new email message, and hit paste. So can you add pictures to your email? Absolutely. Can you hyperlink those pictures? What, where do I want to take them to that video? We want to take them to that video up on my web page. So I'm going to go up and grab that address and hit copy. Back to my picture and my email message. And how do I hyperlink a picture? Does anybody remember? Yeah, we right click, link. Right click on the picture, link. And hit paste. And you can see that I've now hyperlinked that picture. Therefore, I have video in my email message. Ooh. <laughs> um, so, this is something you'll, it's a hundred tips like this is, is uh, next week's class. I want to see in that, and I want to show you all these cool things you can do is to brush up and polish up on your technology uh, in class and, and get CRS credit to boot. Hey, Mark, and then you can take that and put that into a signature like we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, mean, Outlook, as long as you ask, check my time. Okay? We're 15 minutes in. We're good. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Um, yeah, you know, look, if you want to make uh, a picture can be a part of that auto text too. Um, so you go in here. Now, oh, this is kind of hidden in mine. So let me try to hide this floating menu. There we go. And uh, I highlight whatever I want to become auto text. So write the perfect paragraph, like Michael said. Um, 
and then I hit insert quick parts, quick parts right yeah auto text and and by the way those example emails those are all auto text for me um, every time we get a new listing we have an auto text for the details for that listing and we have the showing response hey go check out this video so we give it that auto text selection and now it can pop in automatically with the, the use of a keyword. Nice. Again, I want to brush through that. I mean, right today we're just doing this real quickly, but uh, next week we'll go through that over and over again. Here's how you get to that class that we're talking about. Technologies and Plans for Success is located over at CRS.com. It's uh, the 5th and 6th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 Central Time. And we'd love to see you there. I got, I'm excited about Michael doing the, the customer relationship management and Pat doing the email marketing sections. Uh, looking forward to it. Hope you see you then. Pat. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, Pat, I think you're, uh, double check your audio. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you, Pat. There we go. We got it now. So, yes, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Let me share my screen then. And um, so, <clears throat> what, there we go. So, I want to talk to you about what I think is the best prospecting technique ever for today's market. <clears throat> now, it's pretty good any of the time, but right now in the market we're in where we're all at home and all of our contacts are at home, it really is a good deal. And it's what you mentioned, Mike, the real estate review. Now, uh, whoops, here is the, uh, the concept. These are all things you could talk about when you're discussing this with a person. You could talk about area sales activity or challenging their property tax assessment. You certainly wouldn't talk about all of them, but you've got to ask enough questions to find out what's really important to them at this moment. And so, you know, uh, my favorite saying is always, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's sort of like what Mike said, you got to tell them you love them on a regular basis. And so what we're doing right now is finding out about them. And then we're going to actually say, I've got a little gift for you. I do this normally for my people. I try to do it once a year, a real estate review. These are the things we could cover. What's most important for you? Now, if you've ever read Larry Kendall's Ninja Selling book, it's a great book. It just came out, but he's been teaching. The Ninja Selling course has been out forever and ever and ever. Uh, Mike's one of the instructors, and, and so he says that when they do, the ninjas do a face-to-face -face review, 43% of the time they result in a listing sale referral, even though you're not asking them for it. So within 12 months, 43% of the time they get some kind of a transaction. If they mail it to these people, then what happens is uh, the review, they do it over the phone and mail it to them 15% of the time. And so it, he considers it to be the number one most productive activity you can do. So let's just talk about a little of this, and I'm not going to spend long on it because you're a pro. You know how to do this stuff. You could probably do a search through MLS in your sleep. So when you call them on the phone and they tell you what they want, or maybe they want it on a rental property, you pull up the, the things. Maybe you talk to them about absorption rate and the fact that, well, this is how many houses are selling right now. This is how many houses are on the market. Maybe you would talk about possible zoning changes. Now, maybe that's not so important in today's market. If you're looking to package it, maybe you could package it with your RPR, and, uh, and then you've got a great looking package to send them. A nice question to ask them, are you thinking about doing any updates in, in to your home? And when they do, you can look at this annual report that comes out every year in NAR, produces it in Realtor Magazine. The latest one is the 2021, came out in December. And you can talk about the different items that will give them the highest return on their expense that they, they spend on these particular items. 
you can also tell them practically uh, in some cases, you know what, it, if you're going to be there a long time, just do it because you're going to enjoy it. But you, it may not cause the house to sell for that much more. And of course, on that website right there, that link, which is Remodeling Magazine, you can go in and, and find the numbers for any particular area in the country. Maybe a nice piece of advice would be to ask them, do you have a home warranty on your house? I think you got one when you first bought it, but have you renewed that? And then tell them why it may still be important for them to have a home warranty and they're eligible to purchase it for themselves. I know right now that investors are purchasing these things on all their rental property. Sure. Uh, uh, here in Texas, where Mark and I live, uh, the property tax assessment is about to start in May, and you have a window of time that you can challenge it. They'll probably lengthen it this year because of COVID-19. But again, if you had a one-page sheet which you could teach them the process of challenging it, provide them with the comps, and then tell them what other things they need to do, like take pictures of things uh, in the house because they're people that are listening to their argument are not going to see their house and it could help them get their taxes lowered. You could ask them if they're thinking about refinancing and you know in COVID-19, this market we're in right now, some people wouldn't normally be thinking about refinancing but they'd like to have something on hand just in case maybe they lose their job or they need their money. Some people might get a HELOC some people may just do a regular refinance because the rates are pretty low right now, even though they are tightening up a little bit with uh, credit requirements and that sort of thing. But you could run the numbers for them and let them see what it would cost to refinance and what their new payments would be. Or if you had things like this, which would be uh, a capital improvement register where they could go through their house and list all their capital improvements, That'd be another nice thing that every homeowner should do so that they get to take full advantage of the capital gain exclusion later on down the road. You could ask them if they wanted to pay off their home quickly, and then you could talk to them about uh, maybe an equity accelerator. You could talk to them about the home inventory. That's one thing right now that another one of our friends, Mike Parker, he's got his whole team doing this right now where they're going and uh, talking up the concept of this home inventory and then sending them a copy of this. So it's a, a nice thing to do. Or you could talk about rental property, and I'm not gonna go through the slides with you right now. This is from a little bit longer thing, but what if you had something like this, an annual home advisory that would have the, this becomes part of your package that you mail to them or give them if you were doing it in person, and it itemized all those different things, and then you add the data that you get from MLS or other places, to that. Well, you'd have a really nice package to give them, and that's what it would end up looking like, and they would appreciate it. It would definitely be a gift, and that's why it, it is, generates such a high rate of return. Now, back to the marketing piece. I put this together on this, and it's, again, an email, just like uh, Mark got through talking to you about. You could have a little graphic if you wanted to. This one just says, Something we do throughout the year for our customers is a real estate review where we provide owners with information about the current market value and it lists some things. No charge or obligation. If you'd like to do it, since we're both at home right now, click on the calendar below, find a time that works for you, and we'll do it. And that was a tip from last week called Calendly, so you could get your calendar synced with that and it makes it really an easy thing to do. So I could send that out individually, or I could do a mass email on that. So it would work really well. If we were in a live class right now, hands would be flying up saying, <laughs> can I get a copy of that? So well, you know, how, I, get how can we get a copy of that? Well, first of all, I guess if, if they go to InTouch Systems um, and then they go to more webinars, we have a one hour webinar on that particular topic and it's called the Real Estate Review. Okay. And it will go through that in, complete detail and uh, and then it would tell them how they could get a copy of that form that's we're very well written it really is yeah and and then the last thing i w would say would be uh again i'm so excited about this because both mark and mike and i all teach this class that mark's going to be doing next week and he was nice enough 
to invite us to do a piece of each one of those. So uh, we're going to chime in and hopefully you'll get a lot of good information as we go along. So I hope you're able to, to go to crs.com, register for this class. It'll be well worth the time and the money. Right. Hey Pat, that was great. Mark, that was great. We promised we'd be doing do, doing this in what thirty minutes. I've got twenty six minutes right now. You guys want to add anything else before we sign off? Uh, it's not a class to miss. It, it's time to polish up our tech. Why well, we got a little extra time? And I got lots of cool stuff to show you. I go over show you how we can do video communications with our clients, um, how to keep in touch with people with uh, the in touch program. Uh, social networking, marketing, refining that, controlling it. Can't wait. I hope to see you there. You know, Mike, you said at the beginning of this section, this uh, video today, that uh, you've got to tell people you love them on a regular basis. And uh, and doctor, and, and uh, this fifty-year-old, this man that had been married for fifty years was once being talked to by his wife. Tell me you love me. Tell me you love me. And he said, I told you 50 years ago when I married you that I love you. And if anything ever happens to make me change my mind, I'll let you know. Well, Dr. Phil, who used to live in Arlington out here uh, near Dallas, if Dr. Phil was here right now, he would tell you that if you don't tell your spouse you love them on a regular basis, someone else will. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you right now, and Mark and Mike will, I didn't get their uh, agreement on this ahead of time, but after being in real estate for as long as I've been in, as long as they've been in, we're going to tell you that if you don't tell your customers that you love them on a regular basis, another realtor will. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. Well said, Pat. Hey, thanks, Pat. Thanks, Michael. It's good seeing you again. See okay. you soon. Take care. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.